This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by Gamefly. Coming up on Destructoid, Assassin's Creed 3's first DLC has players taking on the evil king, George Washington. Wake up, Grandpa, because we have Pac-Man news, and do not tell your mother because you can watch porno on your Xbox 360. More distinguished, professional, mature video game news right now on Destructoid. Welcome to Destructoid, I'm Tara Long. And I'm Max Scoville. Yes, our professional video game news show indeed. Journalism. Yes. Is Speaking what we're of doing. journalism, there's breaking news. Yeah, actually. literally minutes before we turn the cameras on, something very big happened. Do you wanna do you wanna say it? I'll, I'll do the honors. Uh, Cliffy B has apparently left Epic Games. That is Cliff Blazinski. Yes. For people who don't want to get punched in the face. It's his given name. Um, yeah, big news. Uh, he kind of wrote a little goodbye note. Um, of course, you know, the, the head people at Epic uh, said some nice words about his contributions to the team. And uh, it seems like he's just kind of taking a break for a while. Yeah, he just so, got married a couple months ago. So this is true. That's the thing. It doesn't sound like anything's, you know, rotten in, in Denmark or, or at Epic. Um, Rod Ferguson, um, Gears Viking on Twitter or whatever, he left a, a little while ago mm. to, uh, to go work at Irrational Games. So it doesn't seem like people are jumping ship. It just, you know, I think, I think things are things are changing. Really? Cliff, no, Cliff, Cliff no jokes? To, no jokes. I don't know. Really? I think, I think wow. Cliff's, Cliff's going to take a break. He's going to drive his nice car around with his, with his pretty new wife. So. Wow, maybe this will be a nice professional program. Yeah, Getting the into hell. the real news for today, the planned news, uh, Ubisoft has announced a season pass for Assassin's Creed 3. Um, it's not really an uncommon thing anymore, but this is actually the first one that they've had for the Assassin's Creed series. So. It's kind of new in that regard. Uh, after the game launches on October 30th in North America, players are going to have the option to buy the Assassin's Creed 3 Gold Edition for $89.99. That comes pre-packaged with the Season Pass and gets you access to all five DLC packs a week earlier than everyone else, so there's bragging rights too. There's also going to be a bundle that comes with uh, Assassin's Creed 3 Gold Edition and Liberation for the Vita. That uh, bundle is going to be priced at $119.99. And of course, if you've already pre-ordered the game, you will be able to buy the season pass separately within six months after the game's launch. And if you purchase it separately, it will cost you $30 or 2,400 Microsoft points. To go along with this news, perhaps even more exciting, we also got some details about the first piece of DLC content. It's going to be called The Tyranny of King Washington. Uh, this is actually a whole new single player campaign that's going to be spread out over three episodic content packs and it's going to allow players to experience an alternate ending to the American Revolution. One where they are forced to fight George Washington. Yeah, that's how it yeah. should have gone down. How has this not happened in a video game yet? I'm baffled. Um, it's actually unclear whether or not these three episodic content packs count as three of the five or if they're just one bundled together. I'm guessing it's probably three out of the five um, because all they've really said about any of the other DLC is that it will contain some new multiplayer maps and characters. So um, looks like single player content is mostly what's in store for you guys. That sounds kind of awesome, actually. Yeah, I like it. Fighting like George, George Washington, Washington. Is, that's, that's something that I would make up as a joke and someone else is doing it seriously. So that should be yep. plenty entertaining. Um, Speaking of entertaining, as we near, near the announcement of new next-gen consoles, probably next year sometime, we're probably going to have to suffer a bunch of really stupid debates about which current system was the winner of this last generation. Xbox. And if uh, yesterday's news is any indication, it's going to be the Xbox 360, because porno. That's right. Yesterday, streaming adult video portal YouPorn proudly announced on their blog that they are coming to Xbox. Yes, that's right. You can now watch videos of professional sex havers having sex with each other from the comfort of your parents' living room on your Xbox. As you can see from this misleading image here, YouPorn will be featured prominently on the dashboard alongside other fine streaming services like ESPN and Netflix, but as I just said, the image is misleading. YouPorn's announcement was unsanctioned by Microsoft, and Microsoft frequently switched into damage control mode, saying, to be clear, we are adding Internet Explorer to Xbox Live, not specific adult content providers like YouPorn or any other specific website, website content. Additionally, we give members and parents the option to turn this feature on or off on, from the, for their accounts, access to Internet Explorer for all child accounts is blocked by default. Please don't burn your Xbox in a big pile and shout at us. We didn't do that. 
So yeah, Uporn is coming to Xbox uh, the same way that every other website is coming to Xbox along with Internet Explorer, which will be available to users who sign up for the Xbox Live Public Beta 2012. And of course, Uporn urges everyone to go sign up for that so that they can watch porn. They also recommend purchasing a wireless keyboard so they can get to the porn quicker. So public beta, more like master beta, boom, video games. I love my job, oh, your turn. Oh God. What? Yeah. That announcement is so weird. Like, hey, why not announce, hey, child porn's coming to Xbox, you know? Anything on the internet. Because child porn's illegal. Yeah, but it still can be looked at. Are you a criminal? No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Moving on, um, I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna follow that up with a story about Pac-Man, but I will try anyway. Pac-Man is still a thing, apparently, or at least seven million people care to fill up their Facebook feeds with Pac-Man related announcements. And the latest one is a survey from Namco asking fans to vote on the art style of the next Pac-Man game. Mm. Hmm. There are four different mock-ups shown, as you can see. Um, the first one is kind of a futuristic CGI-looking one. I can only assume it's a foreshadowing of Pac-Man's future meth addiction, because, good God, that's a meth rage if I've ever seen one. To be fair, everything Pac-Man does is sort of a meth addiction. I mean, he runs around in a dark room just shoving it's pills true. in the his entire mouth, idea getting chased by very... ghosts, so. Yeah. Well, okay, let's check out the second picture. This is, um, okay, it's also creepy. Uh, Pac-Man at least looks slightly less menacing, although those ghosts clearly have some kind of untreated drug problem. I mean, the dilated pupils and the uncontrollable drooling, it, all the warning signs are there. I was thinking they look more like venereal disease, but, you know, sure. Drugs, Either one drugs works. works. Either one works. Drugs, porn, um, Pac-Man. Traveling a little further back in time, it seems we've got choice C, which, again, I mean, what's, what's going on here? Why are the two ghosts on the left so angry and the one on the right just doesn't seem to care at all. She's like, she's not even looking at Pac-Man. She's she's probably distracted by choice D, which is the worst out of all of them. I mean, uh, God, the hand-drawn, squinty eyes and cone-shaped teeth. Huh. I can't even begin to guess how many so drugs they're all on. That's what Jonan Vasquez has been doing for this the last seven years. This is terrifying. If this survey has taught me anything, it's that Pac-Man is the Keith Richards of video game characters, which would also explain why he's been around for so long, so. I personally voted for choice D, uh, not because it's the best, but because a guy on the Facebook comments told me that if I didn't like D, then I should die, and I don't really want to die, so yeah. In conclusion, video games. Wow. That was, a, that was a good news story. See, you thought I couldn't stop wow. your U-porn, or top your U-porn story. I thought of a good segue, though. You could have said something about putting balls in mouths. Oh, of missed opportunities. So, as you guys probably know, I consider myself to be something of a Star Wars fan, and in terms of Star Wars gaming, there really hasn't been much to talk about, especially considering how prolific LucasArts used to be, you know, like a decade ago. In the last year, we've had The Old Republic, which was pretty far removed from the Star Wars I know and love, Star Wars Connect, which made me throw up in my mouth a bunch, and then we got the somewhat promising announcement of Star Wars. Star Wars 1313, which is a gritty, mature third-person shooter, which, you know, could turn out to be very cool, though from what I've seen so far, the most Star Wars-y thing about it are the words Star and Wars in the title. Today, though, we have a glimmer of hope. The Bothan spies over at NeoGAF have managed to dig up a rather official-looking box art for an XBLA game called Star Wars First Assault. Also, this was hosted on the Xbox website, so it's probably official. If the name rings a bell, it's because LucasArts registered trademarks and a domain name for First Assault earlier this year, and then declined to comment because secrets are apparently more fun than letting people know about things. Um, given that there are no actual boxes for XBLA games, their, their box art tends to be more like thumbnail images, as you can sort of see by the low resolution. It's not the most detailed thing at a glance, but uh, I can tell you, um, we're looking at a firefight here between some stormtroopers and some soldiers wearing what appear to be the ty same types of helmets that the rebel ground forces wore on the forest moon of Endor. And uh, based on the architecture, I would be guessing that they're on Naboo, specifically Theed Palace. So, you know, that's just me guessing, you know. See? Come on! That's totally what it looks like! Give me a break. Oh. So anyway, that's, yeah, it's like supposed to be a little tiny icon on your dashboard. Maybe anyway. they misspelled it. Maybe it's S Tar Wars. The S stands wow. for super or That's something. That's dumb. They already made Super Star Wars in like 1995. Anyway, Star Wars First Assault, the XBLA game. I'm dying to hear more about this one, but you know, help if LucasArts announced it, yeah. so. You should hold your breath for that. Let's take, a, let's take a word from our sponsor. Let's do that. Gamefly is the largest online video game rental service and offers you a choice from over 8,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. With plans starting at $15.95 a month, Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as they like. There are no late fees, no due dates, and shipping is always free. 
Once you're done playing a game, just send it back and Gamefly will send you the next available game on your list. And if you really like the game you're playing, just click keep it on the Gamefly website and the game is yours at a discounted price. Gamefly will even mail you the case and manuals free of charge because you need manuals to play games. Members can also play hundreds of PC games for free with Gamefly's unlimited PC play plan. Even better, Destructoid fans can get a 15-day free trial when they head over to Gamefly.com slash Destructoid and sign up. You should, Video games. You should, you should go do that because they yeah. have games there. So uh, you guys remember earlier this week we put up a, a cool XCOM video where I played XCOM with uh, Jake Solomon, one of the guys from Firaxis, and and, uh, and our boss Zach played. Uh, he played XCOM against us in the multiplayer with with Garth DeAngelis, also from Firaxis, and it was fun. That's a fun video. On this channel, we made another video that is also a lot of fun, where Anthony Carboni and I pretended that we were XCOM guys and we bothered everyone in the entire office. And you should go watch that. It's over on our Rev3 Games channel. I wore an outfit. Tara's in it. That's Josh, that's Graham. We shout a lot. There's some swearing and, and banging of tables, and it's it's a good good fun thing to watch. So just go watch it's that. It's fun. It's yeah. a fun video. It's fun. We said so. Speaking of fun, um, not to be outdone by our silly videos, uh, Jake Solomon from Firaxis actually put up his own over on the 2K Games YouTube channel, youtube.com slash 2K Games, where he went into a video game store wearing an XCOM shirt as like one of the guys who made XCOM and just sold, tried to sell his game to people. Just bugging people while they're shopping. Which, hey man, that's how you do it. Yeah, he's a funny guy, so you should go check that out too. He's, he's a nice man, and he's just hassling these, these people, so. If I made a game, I'd go to a store and try to slang it to people totally, who don't right? know any better. I wish yep. more developers would do that. Yep. It's shameless. So, uh, we gotta wrap this thing up, because you know, it's that time. While you're out doing things on the internet, you should go follow us on Twitter, because it makes us feel good. I am Tara Longest, he is Max Scoville, and of course the show is on there too, at Detroit Show. We are gonna be back in the studio on Friday, however, this week's show will not be live. Our producer, Zach, is going out of town, so the fabric of society what? may very well unravel completely. What? It's too soon to tell, Max. I it's saw it on the calendar, tell. but I thought it was a joke, a mm -hmm. sick, cruel joke. We're society not unraveling, 8 p.m. All right. Um, but hopefully you guys join us anyway. That's going to happen right here at youtube.com slash detoy, just like every episode we do. We've been hard at work on tons of other video game content besides this show. Uh, Max just named a few of them, and uh, there's way more coming, and you should be seeing the fruits of those very soon. So as always, thank you for being patient and for watching our show and hopefully leaving nice comments. Please leave the nice comments, yes. not the mean ones. Um, also, I would encourage you to subscribe to both Detoid and our Rev3 Games channel, which we talk about constantly. Um, we do so many videos, both there and yeah. here, so if you want to catch all of them, then subscribe. Yeah, just do that. Do or that. we'll get angry and we'll start crying and breaking stuff, and you'll miss all the cool reviews that we're going to do because review season is here. Holy crap, I should go home and start playing that game that I'm reviewing. Right anyway, we'll see you guys on Friday. Take care.